This is part two of showing you by my own research why I view the land of Cush in ancient North America. If you want to watch part one, it's on my page and that'll get you going into this video. Most definitely, because this might just be a shock to you and you might want to know more information, more background information. Please go see that first video. But nevertheless, Schlemmer, meaning well-being, and let's get into it. So we're here in the Aramaic Targum of Pseudo-Jonathan in Genesis 10. I remember explaining why the Gichun River encompasses the land of Cush, and Cush, his land is called Arabia. Arabia here in North America? Arabia? Oh man, that's a little that's that's a tough pill to swallow. Come on, I don't know about it, but check it. Just hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. All right. So we read here that um, Cush, his his uh, province name, his land is called Arabia. We read here in the sons of Chim. Right, sons of a chim. Some people say ham. Sons of ham. I say chim. Chim. Uh, Cush is one of his sons. Mitzrim, one of his sons. All right. Foot and uh, put and uh, Kenan. So we see that his land, his province, name of their provinces, Arabia. See, I wasn't lying to you. And then we go down to uh, verse. Seven, right? And the sons of Cush, Havilah, which is really said Chuile, but they say Havilah. They that's how they pronounce it. I pronounce it Chuile. Okay, you can use either or. You'll find Havilah in the King James version, and in this version, obviously. So you can look his name up. So we were talking about the land of Havilah is Hindiki and the land of Cush is Arabia and they're right next to each other they both have abundant uh, have an abundant source of gold and onyx and beryl okay so now we got that out the way let's move on this is the map I was showing you in part one okay Let's put things in perspective because now we know that the Gichun River runs in the land of Cush. And I'm here to tell you that Cush is here in North America. Now, if we go to the Grand Canyon, we find some petrified pyramids there. It's crazy. If you look at these rocks, you will see petrified pyramids they have it showcased um, it's, it's widely known the petrified temple of Shiva the petrified temple of Cheops the petrified temple of Isis all in the same area all, all right next to each other found in the Grand Canyon and also they're finding more and more Egyptian like artifacts in the Grand Canyon. Now listen, the Kushites were very close to the Egyptians, and I, really, they're, they're they're called Mitzrim, the the Mitzri, not Egyptians. Mitzri is in the Hebrew text and Aramaic text. Now they translated in English as Egyptians. That's a Greek word, but that's not who they were. Matter of fact, a lot of these ancient uh, Egyptians they called themselves. Kemites, like from Kemet, Kemetans, Kemetans, okay? If you haven't heard that, look it up, Kemet, Kemet. But Kemet comes from Kim, Chim. It's not really Kim, it's Chim. Okay? Chim, Ham, Hamites, those are the Kemetans. Chimites, Hamites. Okay, so with that being said, here in this area is 
the land of Cush, as we were talking about. Before I explain this next slide, I failed to mention that the Colorado River is the Gichun River. That's the river that describes as running into the land of Cush. Here in Isaiah 19 in the Aramaic Targum of Pseudo-Jonathan, starting in verse 23, we read, And at that time there shall be a highway from Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrians shall fight against the Egyptians, and the Egyptians against the Assyrians, and the Egyptians shall serve the Assyrians. Remember, the name of these people is not Egypt. It's not the Egyptians. It's Mitzri, Mitzrim. I mean, if, we, if you know how to read the letters, you will see that it starts with a mim, what they call a mim, an M sound. So there you have it. That's the first clue. It's not Egyptian. It's not Egypt. It's Mitzrim, Mitzri. So just replace Egypt for Mitzri. Because Egypt goes over there. Egypt is over there where they have it at. On the map. Yes. That's Egypt. But it's not Mitzrim. Mitzrim is over here. In North America. And I know where it's at. It's on the West Coast. In the LA area. But that's a whole different video that I'm so excited to talk about. I'm actually going to talk about that in... This new article coming out. So I might, I might do a video, a small little video on that part. Because it'll be a good way to separate that article. But uh, I'm going to do a whole video about all of this anyway. But this is just a taste about what I'm doing, what I'm working on. So, all right, let's move forward. And at that time... Israel should be a third party to the Egyptians, the Mitzrim, the Mitzri, and to the Assyrians, a blessing in the midst of the land. Next scripture. Finishing up in verse 25. Whom the Lord of hosts hath blessed, saying, Blessed be my people, whom I have brought out of Mitzrim, and because they sinned before me, I carried them captive into Assyria. But when they repent, they are called my people and Israel, my inheritance. Now, let's read the same passage in the King James Version. I'm just going to read verses 24 and 25 from the King James Version. In that day shall Israel, Israel, be the third with Mitzrim and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Mitzrim, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Ishra, or Israel, my inheritance. Now we have that out the way. Let's go back to this. Pangea, Shem and Chim belong together because in those scriptures that I just read, the Assyrians, Mitzrim, and Israel all come from either Shem or Chim. Those two brothers and their subtribes stick together in one part. And then we have Japheth. Japheth, I'm going to show you why he's more extensive, way more, far more extensive. And uh, throughout the, the throughout the world, that's going to be in part three because man, time just flies when you just giving the knowledge out like that. Yeah, I appreciate y'all listening. Stay tuned for part three.